Today's first lesson contains a powerful image, a shoot growing from the stump of Jesse. It's a prophecy about the coming of the Messiah. For those who are curious, Jesse was the father of King David, one of the greatest kings of Israel. And some people believe that this prophecy is about him. Still others believe it's about Jesus, whose reign is one of peace and reconciliation, and it's one of the reasons why we read this text during the Advent season. Yet we can also understand these words on a metaphorical level as well, and apply them to our lives. There are times when we feel like lifeless stumps who long for new growth to appear. This can be due to a battle with illness, the end of a relationship, or a financial crisis. And collectively, our world has gone through such a time as we experienced a global pandemic together. We lost so many things and so many people during this period of isolation and precautions. We also became more divided in a time that should have united us. But as we begin to come together again, and nearly all those precautions have been eliminated, we begin to wonder. We wonder what new growth will appear from the lifeless stumps in our lives. What lessons did we learn during the pandemic that will help us to grow as individuals and as a community? Well, several weeks ago, I read an interesting article in the Washington Post by Jess McHugh. It was entitled, How the 1918 Pandemic Changed America. Not surprisingly, there were many parallels between the two pandemic experiences that may help us to decide what new shoots we'd like to grow as we move forward. In 1920, Senator Warren G. Harding campaigned for president on one of the blandest platforms in U.S. history. He promised neither hope nor change. Instead, his slogan was a return to normalcy. But guess what? He won by an unprecedented 60% of the vote. And I am certain that many of us wish for the same thing these days. But back then, much as we're seeing now with many Americans emboldened by vaccines and hoping that the worst is behind us, the months and years immediately following the 1918 flu pandemic were marked by a desire to go out, to newly reopen cinemas, restaurants, and of course, family gatherings. And there was even an uptick in Christmas shopping in 1918. Yet the funny thing about pandemics is that they change us forever. There really is no return to normalcy. We've all been changed by this pandemic, both for good and for bad. And the question we need to ask ourselves is, what will it take? What will we take with us as we move forward? What lessons have we learned that will make us better people post-pandemic? And this is where the image of shoots growing from a lifeless stump comes into play. And the new shoots that I see starting to grow in my life are as follows. Number one, I value more deeply the relationships I have with those I love and care about. And this includes family, friends, and everyone at Abiding Savior. Number two, I have chosen to spend more time being involved in activities that are life-giving, rather than doing things out of a sense of obligation. And finally, number three, my sense of gratitude for both the people I love and the activities I'm involved in that are life-giving has increased exponentially. I no longer take anything for granted, but have a much deeper appreciation for things that bring love and peace and joy into my life. And I hope that you will do the same. I hope that as we move forward, you'll re-embrace some activities you used to do while letting others go. If this pandemic has taught us anything, it's that our lives are more fragile than we sometimes think they are. Therefore, it's important that we celebrate and appreciate the good things and the good people that are in our lives. St. Paul states it best in Philippians 4. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things and the God of peace will be with you. Another, interesting, another thing that's interesting about the article are some of the societal trends that happened during the 1918 pandemic, and they definitely have parallels to what we've just experienced these past few years. Without going into too much detail, during the 1918 pandemic, 
there was a growing mistrust of traditional science and a surge in both alternative medicine and anti-science groups. Racist pseudoscience, such as eugenics, also flourished in the post-pandemic years, and this was fueled by anti-immigrant sentiment. Of course, all of this is familiar territory to us, both in the United States and in other countries as well. Yet in the midst of all this distrust and division, some new shoots began to appear. The most significant of these is that working age men were in short supply due to World War I as well as the flu, which disproportionately affected 20 to 40 year olds. Therefore, more women entered the workforce and began working in fields that were once thought too dangerous or unfeminine, such as manufacturing, textiles, science, and medicine. Furthermore, suffragists who were barred from holding rallies during the pandemic lockdowns went door to door to campaign for their cause. Women won the right to vote in 1920, just months after the final waves of the pandemic blew through major cities. And this gives me hope that new shoots can grow from the lifeless stump of a pandemic. It did in their time, and it will now. In the past few years, as we've seen a nation divided over issues of systemic racism, women's bodily autonomy, and equal rights for the LGBTQ community, I continue to hope that our divisions will be healed and we will come together as a nation to protect and preserve the rights of all people. But this is going to take a lot of hard work, but I am hopeful that we can nurture some new shoots that will bring life and vitality to all of God's people instead of a select few. To very loosely paraphrase Isaiah, I long for a day when the spirit of wisdom and understanding rests on all of us, when we become advocates for the poor and the oppressed of this earth, when religious conservatives and liberals can learn to live with each other and Democrats lie down in peace and harmony with Republicans. I could dream, can't I? I hope you'll dream too. I can hope that this pandemic will eventually change us for the better instead of bringing out the worst in us. I can pray for beautiful new shoots to spring from our collective pandemic stump. So this Advent, I hope you will dream with me. I hope you will pray expectantly for transformation and rebirth to happen on a personal and national level. May this be our heart's desire this Advent and into the new year. And may we trust the Christ child to lead us into a bright and more hope-filled future. Amen.